Best Western made booking our family beach vacation a breeze, and it felt a little like... <laughs> Time to go. Okay, kids, back in the room. You gotta come on, guys. It has to be like Good night. Life's a trip. Make the most of it at Best Western. Sometimes it takes a different approach to help you unlock your true potential. With Capella University's game-changing FlexPath learning format, you gain relevant skills you can apply to your career right away. Earn your degree from an accredited university and be confident in the quality of your education. Imagine your future differently at capella.edu. Capella University is accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. Learn more at capella.edu slash accreditation. Ah, motherhood. One minute, your mom of the year. I love you, mommy. Then the next? <coughs> mm, not so much. From bath time to bullying, from potty training to puberty, parenting is full of challenges. But one thing is for certain, you are not alone. Welcome to Modern Mom Probs. I'm your host, author, mother, parenting expert, Tara Clark. Join me while we tackle today's Modern Mom Problems. Welcome back to another episode of Modern Mom Probs. I'm your host, Tara Clark. You know, here on Modern Mom Probs, we try to solve the world's problems. But, you know, if we can't, at least we're having fun talking about them. Today's episode is a little bit different from a lot of the other ones that we do. Today, I've invited one of my favorite podcasters and one of my favorite authors, Joe Piazza, to come on the show to talk about her new book, The Sicilian Inheritance. And what makes this book very special Special. Well, there's a lot of things, but one thing in particular, it is based on the true story of Joe's great, great grandmother's murder. So there's a certain element of true crime and a certain element of historical fiction that goes into this. And as a Sicilian American, I'm just happy that there's some sort of representation for strong Sicilian women out there. So without further ado, let's bring on Joe. Joe? Welcome to the show. Ah, oh, bene bene, buongiorno. <laughs> I am so excited. So you're going to Sicily. I feel like I, I'm going with you. I'm going vicariously with you. You are. You are. Everyone is going to come with me on this trip. I am going to be a content monster on this oh, trip. I hope you are. Starting as soon as we get off. I'm, everyone's going to pack with me and then we're going to go and I'm flying. I'm flying to Sicily tonight. Like I'm just getting on a plane and I'm going to solve a murder. Incredible. Where are you flying into? I'm all right. So I'm flying from Philly to Rome because uh, you have to. Although I think a Palermo flight is about to get added. Yeah, or at least from New York, from New York. And then Rome to Palermo on Ryanair. So all of my luggage is going to be lost. I'm not going to have any clothes. <laughs> You know, it's funny that you say that one time we did fly to Sicily and our luggage got lost. So yeah. <laughs> my, lug my luggage has been lost every time I've gone to Sicily. One time my stroller got lost. Like my stroller that was my car seat got lost and oh, it just yeah. followed me around Sicily for like a week. Like, never, oh, never catching God. up with me. So I had a three month old strapped to me the whole time. But yeah, no, the luggage is definitely going to get lost. It doesn't matter what I pack. But I'll, you know, you try, you try. We have big aspirations. And my best friend isn't working right now. She's an attorney and she's taking a career pause. And so she was just like, yeah, I'm just going to come. And I'm like, yes, she is. okay, great. So she's already in Rome drinking by herself. And she is meeting me at the Rome airport tomorrow. And we're flying to Palermo together. And I'm immediately like going to Agrigento to dive into like state archives to find the record of this murder. I want to talk all about this because the book, The Sicilian Inheritance, is based upon the true story of your great grandmother's murder. Yes, yes. Great, great. There's a lot of great. great There's great a lot of graves here. Yeah. Much like when people are like, is that your second cousin? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Anyway, great, great grandmother. I wrote The Sicilian Inheritance because there's this story in my family about my great-great-grandmother being murdered before she could join the rest of the family, her husband, in America. But everyone has their own version of this story. And because we're Italian-Americans, we're liars and myth-makers and storytellers in the best of possible ways. And 
after I wrote The Sicilian Inheritance, the novel, which is about a woman being left behind and the other women lifting her up and women's ambition and agency, and it's a just delicious adventure through Sicily. After I wrote that novel, I was like, oh, God, I guess I have to solve the real life murder now. Yeah, you do. Uh, Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And so I took my kids to Sicily last summer to try to start solving this murder. Her name is Lorenza Marsala. She was killed at age 54. And her husband was already in America. Most of her children were already in America. Her husband had been gone for 12 years. She was alone for a long time in Sicily. And there's all these theories that she was killed by the mafia for her land. She was killed by the mafia like in retribution for something. Or she was a witch and a healer and she like didn't heal the wrong person. And when I first went Just like Serafina. Just like Serafina. Just like Serafina in my book. I mean, there are the weird thing is I didn't want to know the true story while I was writing the novel. And then so much of the novel is actually the real story because I'm definitely a Sicilian witch. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I am. But you know what? Anki Io, so am I. I so that's okay. See, si, si, Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally, totally, exactly. So, yeah, so when I went over there the first time this summer, again, three kids under the age of seven, I'm like, I'm going to go solve a murder. God bless you for traveling with three kids under the age of seven. Well, I just listened. We just finished the first and second episodes. Oh, and the podcast is also called The Sicilian Inheritance. So we've got the book, The Sicilian Inheritance, and the podcast, The Sicilian Inheritance. And so... I didn't really believe that she was murdered when I first went over. I was like, you know, maybe it is totally made up, like family lore, right? But in the town where she's from, there's two books of death. And in one book, it's like deaths by natural causes just died in the home. And in the second book, it's unnatural causes. Really? Yeah, yeah. And she's in unnatural causes. Mm. So, I mean, that that was like our first clue. We're all like, (gasps) oh! And then we found out that she, like, she didn't die in the home of unnatural causes. She died in a weird field outside of town of unnatural causes. Joe, I have chills. I literally have chills. I know. I know. But in in the book, and this this is like a little bit of podcast spoiler, but it only takes you into episode two. And it's way, like, you're going, the great thing about the Sicilian Inheritance podcast is you go on this journey with me. Like, this is, this is a trip, man. It is, it's a true crime podcast, but it's really a freaking adventure. And so she's in this book of unnatural deaths. There's all of this information about where she freaking died, but no cause of death, which is suspicious because there's causes of death for other people. I feel like that's something that they often record. Yes. Yes, it is, but not for her. And like, it's like, what is the reason for that? Why wasn't her cause of death recorded? And then there's another bombshell that comes with that, but I'm, I I can't reveal that don't, here because yeah, that one's don't. just too big. It's too big, but it's it's a lot. It's a lot. And so this trip, I'm going back. I had to get special permission to get into the court archives to see if there is a police record and to see if anyone was charged with her death. Who found her? I don't know. We don't know. It doesn't say who found her. It says exact. I mean, like. Exactly where it happened to like a start like startling accuracy. It's like around this one bend in the road next to the natural spring by the place where there was a landslide six weeks ago. Like it's like it's like it's, the most Sicilian thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's the most and it's handwritten in cursive. Of course. It's the most Sicilian thing ever. And we also like it was when we found the entry, we're talking to this one clerk in the town. And also my family has gone back and tried to get records about her before. And they've been chased out of town before. Like people have been like, nope, nope, don't, don't follow up on this. Get out of here. And so I was, I was thinking I wasn't going to get anything. But, you know, somehow I found the one administrator who would give me stuff, but he's looking at it. He's like, oh yeah, he's, he's like, she just died right here. And they're like, can you read it out loud? And then he's like, oh yeah, this is a, something happened. <gasps> Whoa. Yeah. Something yeah, so, happened. Something happened. And I mean, and then we found the other thing in the book, which is like a big bombshell. So but the problem is getting documents in Sicily, like getting documents anywhere is hard, but harder than here. It's like we had to make requests and then also find the right guy who knew the right guy. And I now I've been granted access to three different archives, but I have to like, I have to wear a mask. I have to wear gloves. I can be in there for exactly an hour. Like I can't have my phone in there. It is very deadly serious. Whoa, that's some real shit. 
It's some real shit. Like, this is some real, like, crazy... I mean, essentially, it's like CSI. I'm yeah. like, I'm a character in CSI now. And yeah, so I'm I'm going with, and my be- and now my best friend is going, and she plans on being tipsy the entire time. So, of course, I'm going to be recording everything. I'm going to be putting all the stuff up on Instagram and bringing everyone along with me. But this is exciting because we are now exactly, we're a month out from the Sicilian Inheritance coming out right now today. This the book. I, I have to tell you that this episode drops on your launch date. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we're out. We're out. Yeah, everyone we're order out. everyone. Buy it right out. now. Buy the Sicilian Inheritance right now. The best thing that I can tell anyone about it is that it is the book that will get you out of your reading slump. And that's what so many people have told me. They're like, I just, I felt like I got to travel to Sicily and I loved these characters and it just, it was fun. I had a good time reading and there's so many books where you don't have a good time anymore. Yeah, that I love that you described it as like something to get you out of your reading slump. That was exactly what it was for me. I read so many parenting books. And yes, yes, you do. I mm-hmm. do. I really do. And like self-improvement books, because, you know, doing this podcast thing for a living, like everyone's like, here, read my book, here, read my book. And so, yeah, I have parenting books up the wazoo, which I love and it, they're wonderful. But this was obviously a fiction book, and it took me right out of my everyday life and my everyday parenting world and sucked me right into the heart of Sicily, and that made me so very happy. And the themes in your book were so important. Can we talk a little bit about the themes of of the book? Yeah, and you know, when I started writing the book, honestly, I did want to just write an adventure. I had been reading so many serious books, and I'm like, you know what? What I'm just going to write a murder mystery in Sicily. I want it to be an adventure. But because I am a person who writes about women in the world and ambitious women and agency and how we care for ourselves, it just, the themes ended up coming in of like taking down the patriarchy, women taking care of each other, how do we treat mothers in the world? I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. But it also lends itself to that. But it does. It does. And so, I mean, at its heart, this is a book. There's two characters, Sarah in the modern day and Serafina in the past. And both of these women are grappling with how can you be a mother in the world and also be ambitious? How can you be a woman who wants more out of life, but also be a caregiver and a wife? And how difficult it is to be successful as a woman. And then the other women that lift you up, that support you, that are here to say, yes, you can. I will help you follow your dreams. I am going to help you save your own life, essentially. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and one thing I thought was really interesting is that Sarah is a butcher, which is yes. highly uncommon for a woman, right? You don't see that every day. And then You do Sarah, not see women butchers, butchers every day. No. no. Despite the fact that it is women typically putting food on a table. Right. But that's the one role that tends not to be. And like, I've known a lot of male Italian butchers. So it's not that like being a butcher as an Italian American, that that is common. But as a female, totally different thing. Totally different thing. Totally different thing. So Sarah is a butcher and I wanted her to be a butcher because I wanted to give her a job that was very physical, you know, a job that was very hands-on and also a job that had to do with food. She's a butcher and also a chef. She started her own restaurant in Philadelphia, but it is hard for a female chef and restaurant owner to succeed. I've talked to so many, so many chefs in Philly who are women who are like, it is, it, it's almost impossible. And we're seeing a lot more these days, but still not nearly enough. So Sarah's business is going under because of these difficulties, because she has a young daughter, because she doesn't have the support from her husband, because she doesn't have the support from her investors, because she is a woman. And I wanted her her to have a job that dealt with food because so much of this book is about delicious food and I want people to to get hungry while they're reading it. I want you to be hungry. I want you to crave delicious food. I just, I love food so much. And I think that we have seen too many books in the past 50 years that have women-centric characters that talk about dieting and talk about restricting and talk about women, like, you know, just like trying, trying to like, keep themselves from enjoying food. And I'm like, no, I'm writing a book about women enjoying the hell out of food because we deserve it. We do. We do. I mean, the thing is, you know, you and I are both Italian-American, Sicilian-American, and we enjoy food. It's part of our culture. It's part of our culture. It's part of our lives. Like I, And I want to 
you know, create books and media that show my daughters that we should be enjoying food. I don't want, I don't want them to grow up the same way that I did, thinking restriction, 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 count the calories. I want them to be healthy and I also want them to love life and love eating. Mm-hmm. And love Italian food. <laughs> and love I'm Italian food. And I'm love Ita- Oh my God. I mean, I'm like, I'm gonna be eating. Italian food in like 16 hours. I'm literally salivating just thinking about that. I'm going to send you so many pictures. Oh, I'm just I like, I, I mean, it's like, you're going to get sick of me because I'm going to send you pictures of everything that I eat. Ah, uh, no, I won't get sick because there's so much beautiful, fresh seafood. The uh, seafood yes. is out of this world. It's uh, well, in, Cis- in Sicily, especially. And I just wrote this piece for Philadelphia Magazine about how Sicilian food is not. Italian no, food. It's not. It is different. We have like, it's fresh fish. It's very Mediterranean. It's ve- very Northern African. I actually, and not like, not like I care anymore because I'm very happy with my body, but I lose weight every time I go to Sicily because you're eating such fresh ingredients. Certo. Mm-hmm. Certo. Si, si, si. <laughs> e vero. And so th- I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to stuff my face. And when you're reading this book, people keep writing to me, the ones who've gotten an early copy, and they're like, I'm so hungry. What, can you recommend what I should eat while I keep reading? And so I've been sending people recipes. I've been sending them, like, I'll go, I'll go find out where they are and find the best Sicilian restaurant and like go through the menu and be like, you should order this right now. Like, I need you to Uber Eats this dish. I've been very hands on with this book launch. I can tell. But you know what's funny? I feel like the Sicilian like embassy or their tourism department needs to thank you because the work that you're doing to get people to go visit Sicily is really phenomenal. This book will make you want to go to Sicily immediately. And if I need someone to write that headline, like that's the headline that needs to be in travel and leisure right now. This book will make you want to go to Sicily right now. We just, I, as we're on the phone, I just got a really nice review from from um, Town & Country. Do you want to hear (gasps) it? Yes, tell us. Yeah, it's so so nice. This is literally, this just in from Town & Country, must-read book of spring 2024. Joe Piazza's book is a charming page-turner packed with wit and wicked twists that will keep readers engrossed. Yeah, they're right. Yes, 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 and yes. And yes. And yes. yes. Go buy this book. I think it's the perfect summer read because even if, let's just say it's June, you're sitting at a pool in Philadelphia. You're in reading Philly. this book yeah. and you're imagining being on the beaches of Sicily. And that's exactly what I think most people are going to be doing. That's yes, yes. I mean, some people have called the Sicilian inheritance the book of the summer. I'm I'm I think going it was to one of those yes. people. <laughs> yeah, you were actually I think it was you. You it was you who said this is the book of the summer. And and I believe that. I think this is one of the books that is gonna this is one of the books that's gonna catch fire with readers more more than anything else. And I just, I can't wait for it to be in the world. I'm so happy it, it is in the world today. And I also want women to read it together. Mm. It's the so perfect I mean, book club book because of the empowerment, because book. of the story without giving too much away. It's like there is a time in the book where the women are running the village. They're running the village. Yeah. And yeah. that alone, I think, needs to be discussed. It needs to be talked about in a group of women. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's the perfect buddy read, too. So I'm encouraging people to like get it for themselves and then for their sister, their best friend, or their mom, because it's a book that wants to be discussed. We want to talk about the things that women don't talk enough about, which is ambition, how we want more out of life. How do we take, how do we take care of each other? And so, yeah, I'm, I want everyone to, everyone to read it out loud with a friend or pick it up. And it's the perfect book to ignore your children while you're on spring break. Totally is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite. I've decided I'm like, my publisher did not like that. As I was going to say, can- they're like, yeah, you ad- got to strike that. <laughs> as an ad, no, they didn't like it as an advertising campaign. I'm like, it's okay. I'll just run the ads myself. Perfect book to ignore your kids on spring break. Perfect book to hide in the bathroom and pretend that you're pooping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's actually yeah. what I did with it. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I couldn't put it, put it down. I was obsessed. It was one of those things where it's like, I couldn't put it down until I finished it. And then I was sad when I finished it. Oh, but that's I mean, that's good. Like that's what I want. I want people to be sad because I'm now envisioning a sequel to it too, which will be set in Sicily and America in Sarah's new butcher shop. And I'm not going to spoil anything. Spoil anything, but uh, it's going to be kind of like the bear meets weeds with oh, the Sicilian mob. But yeah. but make but make it ladies. Yes. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that. I like I that. I want to go back to your real life true crime adventure here. Oh, please how, do. Yeah. How, like, how are you going to do this in, in another language, in another country? I know the bureaucracy in Sicily is bananas. I'll give you a quick story. My husband's family lives in Syracuse, which is on the eastern side of the eastern island. Eastern side, eastern side, and also much more civilized than the western side. <laughs> which is funny, because actually my family's from Palermo, which is on the western side. Yeah, we're bananas over there. Bananas, there's no bananas. scratch, so there's nothing. Okay, no. so, but on, in Syracuse, they have an orchard. They own a lot of land, and they were looking to sell off a piece of land, and they needed my mother-in-law's approval because it was like her mother's land, right? My, my husband's grandmother. Anyway, this has been going on for like three years now because it's like you have to get the right notary and the right mm-hmm. thing and, and mm-hmm. back and forth with like the cousins. And yeah. I've never seen a process take so long as this land sale. Yes. Yes. You have to get the notario. Yes. Who's like, it's like, which is like a notary slash real estate agent. Slash and lawyer. Slash, slash lawyer. Yeah. Slash fixer. Slash, yeah, all of the things. The notario. You got to get the notario. No, I mean, Sicilian bureaucracy is alive and well. I mean, it's like their kink. Okay. If like Sicily, if the island of Sicily had a kink, it would be bureaucracy. <laughs> It gives and them something to do, I guess. I mean, it it's gives an them island, something right? to do. I know exactly. It's it's bureaucracy and gossip is what it is. Bureaucracy, go- gossip, and grudges, and yeah. I well, it's been a year of asking for permission to get into these archives to even figure out where anything is, because no one knows. And then a lot of a lot of records, they're so good at keeping records. They love records, but then a lot of them have just been pillaged. And the mob did take a lot of records, too. They did raid some of the agencies because they don't want certain names in there. So some things may be missing, especially if her death was something to do with the mafia. It might not be in there. And I think there could be reasons why the cause of death is not entered. There's also some like name switches in some of the documents that I think may have been on purpose. So we we have no idea what we're getting into. I personally, I don't think it's that dangerous, but I do have some mafia experts who have been like, watch your back. And I'm like, okay, okay. Yeah. And and including my husband, he's like, you have three kids. Can you get back here, please? This episode is brought to you by Modern Mom Style Box. Upgrade your wardrobe and enjoy unlimited styles for just $60 a month. Modern Mom Style Box is the first rental clothing subscription designed exclusively for moms and moms to be. Get started today with a free trial. Use promo code PTO. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like you are going just with your best friend, so it's not like you're going with like a security guard or anything. Do you have any security set up? I, we have we have a translator. We have a translator. We have a guide because, you know. My Italian is not amazing. It comes back, particularly like after like one glass of wine. But <laughs> um, Sicilian is not Italian. No, it's it is different. A totally, it is a totally different dialect. Yeah. And so we have someone coming with us. She's a researcher and a translator. And we have a guide. We have all, and we have like someone accompanying us to the archives. We have all of the things. But this has been insane. I can't believe where I'm actually going back. And I might have to go back again. That's the thing. I'm like, I I have another book called How to Be Married that I wrote a billion years ago. And I was signing it this weekend because I did a book event in Virginia. Congratulations. Thank you. It was so fun. But I was the inscription was how to be married. The secret to a happy marriage is to leave your husband and go to Italy with your best friend. (laughs) (laughs) That's the best. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm going to go back until I solve this. And I think that I will solve it. And, you know, one of the reasons that this is so important to me is that when my family tells the story of Lorenza Marsala's murder, half of them don't know her name. It's just become this kind of mythology. Our great-great-grandmother was murdered in Sicily, and it's more about them than her. And they definitely don't know any details about her life. And I think that's unfair to her. And so I want to gather as much information about how she lived 
as about how she died. Because I also think that too often we focus on a woman's death, we become obsessed with a woman's death instead of celebrating her life. And so I want to find out how she lived her life. What was she doing in those 12 years where she was alone without her husband and most of her children? And I think that she deserves that. And with all of my Sicilian witchy witchy powers, it does feel like she's been here with me. How many children did she have? She had seven children who Mm. lived to adulthood. Wow. Yeah. And every single one of them were in the States? They all came here. They all came over. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Um, My great-grandfather, Santo, came first. He was the oldest. And then they all came, mostly two by two. Her husband came next. They all settled up in Scranton. And when she was murdered, there were two girls left with her. Oh, so they were still... In Sicily, there were two, so she wasn't two totally girls. alone. She wasn't totally alone. There were two girls that were still there. Yeah. And one of the one of the other things we're going to find out on this trip is where did those girls go mm-hmm. when she died? Who did they go to? Yeah. And how old were they? You know, were, were they babies? They were were about, they teenagers? No, no, they were teenagers. Okay. They were teenagers at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot that we can dig into. We are, I mean, like you mentioned, we're trying to get, get the land records too. And then I have this guy. There's one restaurant in the town where my family is from. My family is from this town called Caltabalota. And in the book, The Sicilian Inheritance, I call it Caltabalessa because I'm like, it's not exactly the same. And it just gave me a little more leeway to, you know, fiction. Like some stuff I have to make up. There's one restaurant, one main restaurant. And it opened for us last time we were there. And one of the sons of the owners is also the main real estate guy in town. And so he keeps, trying to, he keeps trying to sell us an apartment there. So I may come back having bought a Sicilian impar- apartment for like a dollar. I was just about to say it was probably going to be a dollar. So it's okay. It was about a dollar. I know, but then, but then the taxes are 25000 So like, Oh, <laughs> is that the thing? Because I've seen I think that that's before. The trick. I'm like, I want to buy a condo for a the buck. trick. Yes. No, I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. I was always yeah. just thinking that like, you know, the walls are caving in and there's no ceiling. And <laughs> Well, that is also true. That is also true. So we would like go into one and I'm like, did, was there... Did something explode in here? (laughs) Like, literally, did a bomb go off in here? And he's like, oh, it is a good deal. And I'm like, all right, I'll take it. That sounds good. Or he's probably like, but look at the view. Aren't you seeing this view? (laughs) Don't you see this view? And I mean, and another one, there was like a garage literally with a car in it that had exploded. I'm like, that car exploded. And my producer, Kate, is like, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. And also, they didn't move it. They just, you, the car comes with it. And also, all of the furniture always comes with it. And I'm like, there's like a blood stain on a couch. I'm like, someone was murdered there. Yes. That was the mafia. I mean, not that we should talk about it because like you shouldn't talk about the mafia, right? Because they don't yeah. exist. But they don't exist. They, they don't, don't exist. exist. Yeah. Yeah. But, but someone like, was blown up in that car. Someone was blown up in that car. Someone was murdered on that couch. Like all of those things are true. All of yeah. those things are true. I mean, I just think it's going to be so fun. I'm excited. I'm just really excited for readers to get their hands on Sicilian Inheritance because it is the best book that I've ever written. I can say that honestly. My husband, who has read all of my books but doesn't read anyone else's books, has said that too. And it's just so personal. And I think that readers are really going to feel that when they're reading this. Yeah, absolutely. A thousand percent. And, you know, for me, and this sounds sort of selfish, but there was a certain level of inclusion and representation because there are not a lot of stories about Italian-American, Sicilian-American women portrayed in a positive light you know in a positive so many light. times like you know the mob wife trend that was going on around which freaking killed me because anything that you know my, my husband always says this and, and and he's right to a certain degree you can't make fun of any different you know ethnic groups but mm-hmm, somehow mm-hmm. the Italians are always the ones that could be the butt of a joke. Oh, we make fun of New Jersey. We make fun of Philly. We make fun of, you know, Tony Soprano or mob wife trends. And it's like, my husband's always like, why are they always making fun of our culture? And and it's true to a certain degree. And it's true. It is true to a certain degree. And, you know, also when it comes to historical fiction, this is my first try at historical fiction. And you don't, you really don't see a lot of... Italian Americans. And if you do, you definitely don't see Sicily. And so I like, it was really important to me to be able to set a book in Sicily because there's so many of us here in the States. Like, if you were Sicilian American, you need this book. You, like, you just like, you have to get this book immediately. And I think that it's, it's nice to see our people in a book. 
that's what it is. I, I really genuinely believe that it's a lack of representation in other books and other pieces of media for the Italian Americans, the Sicilian Americans. And that's why I read this book, like you said, like you're eating a good meal. That's how yeah. I consumed this book. I consumed mm-hmm. this book with every bite of almost like my grandmother's Sunday gravy. Well, they call it gravy, oh. but like Sunday. They call it gravy. Gravy. Yeah. It's gravy. Gravy. <laughs> that's what my grandparents called it. But like their Sunday gravy. And that's how I ate this book. And and I felt I felt safe. I felt like home. It reminded me of my of my grandparents. It reminded me of our trip to Syracuse, which we took a couple, I say a couple years ago. Oh my God, it was 11 years ago, but we're actually going next year. Oh my and gosh, I can't wait for I want to go when you go. Maybe I'll go when you go. We totally could. Or if you book something, then I'll like, you know, for writers or whatever, then I'll. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm also doing a writing and reading retreat. I think it's really nice to to do a retreat for readers mm. to like get to like be in a place and also just to rest for moms to rest and relax and read. So I will be doing a writing retreat and a reading retreat in Sicily this fall, which and I'm trying to make it as inexpensive as possible, which is another reason I'm like, all right, if we can get the book to be really popular, we can get it all sponsored and then people won't have to pay a lot of money to come. Right, right, right. Which is what we're hoping for. I think this is going to be a bestseller. New York Times bestseller. It has New York Times bestseller written all over it. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I mean, you never know because it's a black box. We don't know how the New York Times decides these things. But yes. And I think if we all order the book today, then then it could be. The, I will say the New York Times bestseller list, it is all calculated based on that first week. So like, we've got to do it right now. We've got to do it literally this morning right from jump yep yeah right now right now now i what what's your favorite scene in the book what's your favorite part without giving any spoilers without giving any spoilers away because my favorite scene i i still cry when i read the ending and i love the last paragraph but i also love the scene where Sarah, she is the modern day woman. She's from Philly. She's in her 30s. She's a mom of a a daughter, a young daughter. And she arrives in Sicily for the first time and goes to a restaurant that is very similar to the restaurant in the town where my family's from. And just madness, like madness ensues. It's the perfect Sicilian restaurant scene. But it also includes, there's a character named Juicy, who is a Sicilian woman who did not exist when I first started writing this book. And she, she came to me. Like she, she just popped into my head and was like, you will write me. And she's the best character I've ever written. Juicy is this bad ass Sicilian woman who will do anything to protect her family, to protect her livelihood, and to get ahead in a world that is dominated by men. And, and when you talk about the mob wife trend, her outfits are amazing. The words that come out of her mouth are amazing. And in this restaurant scene, she actually gets up on a table and just sings opera. And I'm like, yep, yep. <laughs> I love that character. She's I love her. really one of my favorite characters in the book. I love Sarah and I love Serafina, but Juicy was really like, mwah, chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. For me, it's Juicy. Like some people love Serafina so much. And I'm like, I just, I want to write Juicy for the rest of my life. Like I want to write a whole series based around Juicy is what I want to do. But you really could though, because there's so much intrigue in her backstory that I know, you could. I know. I think there's a prequel. I think that there, and I think there's a prequel and I think there's many, many sequels. So yeah, juicy, juicy all the way. And it's juicy, G-I-U-S-Y pronounced juicy. It's just the best, it's the best name. She, I mean, she walks with a cane, even though she does not have a limp. She is just, she is a character. Because she's like a pimp like that. In a she's positive, a pimp. In a positive a way. Posi- <laughs> the most positive connotation of pimp that we could imagine. And she's the one, I mean, really, I sat down to write this book like not knowing how it was going to end. And she's the voice that I heard in my head. It was all juicy all the time. I love that. Do you think that there's definitely like a certain element of that very classic, like Italian-American badass, like a Marissa Tomei in My Cousin (sighs) Vinny? She, yes, yes. I mean, I I had Marissa Tomei in my head a lot while I was writing this book. And funny, funny story. Marissa Tomei also discovered a a murder, a Sicilian... Sicilian murder in or Italian, I think maybe an Italian murder in her family and went back to investigate it. One of my friends works at the Today Show and I'm writing an essay for her and she's like, oh my gosh, did you know this about Marissa Tomei? And I guess she was asking Marissa about it. I want Marissa Tomei to be in the movie version 
of this desperately. Hey, Marissa, if you're listening, can we get you a copy of The Sicilian Inheritance? A hundred percent, yes. Let's just manifest that. Let's manifest this. Yes. Yes. I mean, I'm manifesting, I'm manifesting bestseller. I'm manifesting getting to write to turn this into a series. Also because I think that Italian Americans deserve a series about us. Like we just we, we do. don't we do. We do. But women, women, because they're always centered on the men. You know, almost everything that we all of the media that we have about Italian Americans is very male centric and the women deserve our thing. We absolutely do because Italian women are very strong. We're, we're so strong. So strong. We're so strong. We're not portrayed that way. We're not portrayed that way. No. No, we are not. We are not. While I've been working on the podcast, the only clip that I want that's from a TV show is Sofia Petrillo being like, picture this. Palermo. <laughs> 1912. 1912. And I didn't think about that when I was writing the book until I started doing the podcast. I'm like, oh my gosh. Serafina is kind of Sofia Petrillo. Yes. No, but a she is though. But it's right. You know, I, know. I grew up watching Golden Girls every week, religiously watching Golden Girls. But as a child, I didn't really put two and two together on that. Like, it makes sense now. I'm 40 years old. It did not make sense when I was nine. Did not make sense when I was nine. I never connected it to my family. I mean, I never really thought about it until very recently because I watch them. I watch them now. I keep them on. Golden Girls is often on in the background when I'm editing podcasts. (laughs) Really? That's all. Where do you find it? What's it on? I bought the series. I bought the series on Amazon. I love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's one, it's one, it's it's wonderful. I mean, my daughter's named B. She's named Beatrix, which is a family name, but also a little bit B. Arthur. Yeah, she was so badass. Speaking of badass, so badass. Women. I mean, all of them were badass. All yeah. of them were badass, and like not like not celebrated that way nearly enough when when the show was on. So, yeah, this book, The Sicilian Inheritance, is a celebration of badass women. It is. In fact, I'm going to turn. I'm turning that into an ad right now. A celebration of badass women. That's going to be the clip from this episode. <laughs> yes. Yes. The Sicilian Inheritance is a celebration of badass women that is going to get you out of your reading slump. And it's going to help you to ignore your children on spring break. Ignore your children. Ignore your children on spring break. Go hide from them in the bathroom and read this book. Because you know what? I hid from my children in the bathroom writing this book. So you deserve to go hide from them while you read it. It's life affirming. It is life affirming. It is. It's like, you know, so many books I've read when I finish them, I don't have joy. And this book, despite like there's some dark twists and turns, but like you finish and you're like, I am hopeful and I am joyful. Yeah. All of those things. All of those things. Joe, where can we find this book? We need to get you on the bestseller list. Where can we we get it? We do. So The Sicilian Inheritance is available wherever you get books. You can order it from Bookshop, from Amazon, from your local indie bookstore. Walk into your local indie, and if they don't have it, they may sell out. Like, crazy fact, most indies only order two copies of any given book. The most they ever order is six, so they may be sold out by the time you get there. Ask them to order more. Barnes & Noble is running some great promotions on it. You can find it anywhere that you get books. It's amazing. Where do you find the inspiration for your stories? Because you've written so many wonderful books. You have a new idea for a new book. I don't know if I could tease to this one. Oh, you can. Yeah, do it. Do it. The Trad Wife Mystery. The Trad Wife Murder Mystery. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, you know, I'm a member of your Substack and I read a part of it. I was like, this is good. You just keep churning out the hits. I keep churning them out. The Trad Wife Murder Mystery. Just, I mean, the, the the ideas come to me. They do. And I've been putting it on my Substack, which, by the way, when you pre-order this, or when you order, when you order, and it's now order. Oh my gosh, you can have it, like today. Um, when you order The Sicilian Inheritance, I am giving away free subscriptions to my Substack, at least for the next two weeks. So it's an $80 value, plus you get the book of the summer, plus you get the Trad Wife novel, which I'm putting in installments on the newsletter. It's so good. I'm like hooked. I'm in it. It's like ballerina farms, but it's like a murder mystery. I probably should. It's a murder mystery. Well, you know, because it's not ballerina farm. It's a lot of different trad wives and influencers. It's an an amalgamation, if you will. But I'm actually I'm going to release another one from the plane tonight. Ooh. Yeah, I I will be reading it with bated breath. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to get on a plane without my kids. 
Oh, yeah. Drinking Aperol spritzes. I don't know if you did that. That's that's my drink of choice. Mine too. I love an Aperol spritz. Well, at all of the book events for this, and we're going to be having a lot in the next month, there's going to be Aperol spritz. There's going to be cannoli. They are going to be a Sicilian disco dance party. So get your orders in and we're going to do one together. I'm working on that today. And then we're just, we're going to have a party. It's going to be a summer of Sicilian parties is what it's going to be. It's a festa. It's a festa. It's a a festa. (laughs) Festa de Sicilian Inheritance. (laughs) That's it. That's it. I love it. I hope you have a safe flight. I hope you have a safe trip. You have Thank to you. document it. Tell us all what's going on, everything like that. But, all of it. But also, like, you know, be safe. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll be safe. I'll be safe. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. That's my big takeaway. And and but have fun, you know? I am. Yeah. My all... plan is to my plan is to have as much fun as possible. Yeah. yeah. How long are you there? Yeah. I'm there till next Saturday. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean it's it is a fast trip, to be honest. To go to freaking Europe. But this is pretty much the max that I can leave the kids in one clip. And I've got all the help. My mom is coming. We've got all the babysitters. I was gone this weekend, though, too, for a book event. And my daughter, B just looks at my husband. And she's like dead eye staring at him. And she's like not putting on her clothes. And he's like, OK. He's like, you know, I'm the boss. And she's like, you're the sub boss. Oh, <laughs> The sub boss. Where'd the she get that? Sub, I don't know. I don't like she's like at a preschool that doesn't even have substitute teachers. And she's just like, you're the sub boss. Amazing. I know. I know. And I'm like, I'm like, can I get that on a sweatshirt for you? Hey, sub boss. Yeah. That's, that's you gonna doing? be his new hoodie. You get that. His new hoodie. Sub get him boss. That for Father's Day. On it. Done. Done. <laughs> I'm an ideas person. <laughs> you're an ideas person. Well, I have a hot Sicilian sweatshirt for you too that I have to send to you. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I will wear that so proudly. You have I know, no I know, idea. I know, I know. You're I will, gonna get it. It's gonna be there in like a week. I will rock that stuff yeah. all over the place. You have no yeah. idea. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, I Perfect. love it. Joe, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for being you. Thank you for writing this incredible book. I'll hold it up, but uh um, oh, let's hold it up. Yeah. yeah, hold it up. I want you to hold yours up because I'm not gonna show my hold video up. today. Go hold get on, it. Go, get go. it. Go. Go, go, go. Oh my gosh. So I only have one hardcover right now because they haven't come in yet. And I it got lost on Amtrak yesterday. There it is. That's it. That's the shot. How cute That's the are shot. you? That is I love it. it. I, I love, love it so much. I adore we're, you. And I adore you. We're going to do all the fun things. We're going to hang out this summer. All the things. Oh, my God. I all love it so much. You I was me. thinking about you this weekend, actually. I was up in the Catskills this weekend. Oh, fun. Where at, were you? At the Cartwright, which is like a water park place. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. At, oh, at, I saw your post. I You made me want to go to the Cartwright. You should go. I'm going to go. It's yeah, fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's my plan. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go this fun. summer. Yeah. You're going to like it. And uh, yeah, I love the... I, as we were driving back, I was saying yesterday to my husband, actually, I mentioned you because we were talking today and and I was like, you know, the Catskills are so relaxing. I get it. Like, I get why you come up from Philly because yeah. it's just like a whole nother world. It's a whole nother world. They're 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 wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're going to have to come up when I'm there this summer yeah. um, and we'll do a whole thing. Yeah. Sure, though. yeah. Let's do it. Sure, awesome. Sure, sure, sure. Mwah, have a safe mwah, flight. Mwah, Thank you mwah, so much for mwah. being here. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Arrivederci. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Modern Mom Probs. I hope you enjoyed our deep dive in today's problem with me, your host, Tara Clark. Join me next time when I'll be interviewing another great guest and tackling another modern mom problem. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review and a rating. As always, you could head over to Modern Mom Probs on Instagram and give me a follow or check out my book, Modern Mom Probs, A Survival Guide for 21st Century Mothers, available online wherever books are sold. Well, that's it for today. See you next time, folks. Best Western made booking our family beach vacation a breeze, and it felt a little like... (laughs) Time to go. Okay, kids, back in the room. Good night. Life's a trip. Make the most of it at Best Western. Hey, parents, Greenlight is here to take one big thing off your to-do list. 
teaching your kids about money. With a Greenlight debit card and money app of their own, kids and teens learn to earn, save, and invest. You can send money instantly, set flexible controls, and get real-time notifications of your kids' money activity. Set up chores and put allowance on autopilot to reward them for their hard work. Then learn about the world of money together. Get one month free when you sign up at greenlight.com slash podcast.